Well, hello and welcome to Hump Day. So pleased to have you to join us today. Remember that we are talking about, and our series is Living the Courageous Life. Now, we are in January, as you well know, and uh, Martin Luther King's birthday is coming up in a matter of a few days. So we dedicate this month to looking at some of his uh, writings and doings. Now, our lesson today, in fact, comes from, uh, the idea comes from a message that he preached just after he was made pastor at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. And we're talking about transform nonconformists. And the series, again, is Living the Courageous Life. Living the Courageous Life. And so Transform Nonconformists is the name of our lesson today. Now, our background passage and our uh, focal passage comes from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Listen to what he says now. This is Paul writing to the church at Rome. Do not be conformed. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now let's go back. Let's don't let's just, just don't rush through that. Do not conform. First of all, what does he mean by do not conform to the pattern? And, and I love that he used the word pattern of this world because you know. Oh, let me go way back <laughs> uh, to when I was in junior high school at Duval Junior High School. And I had a clothing teacher by the name of Miss Frazier. And as you well know, girls had to take clothing and boys took uh, 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 auto, I think it was. But anyway, we had to take clothing off our um, sewing, our food classes. So I had this class, and I, I really wanted the food class, but they gave me the sewing. And the thing that I learned that the first thing, if you wanted to make something, you use a pattern, and you put the pattern on the material, cut according to the pattern. So, that is what Paul is saying. We are not supposed to look like the world. Do you hear me? See, and I will say it another time. We make a mistake when we think that we are supposed to be like the world. No, we have messed up when we are not, when we are like the world. We are to be different from the world. So he said, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How, Paul? By the renewing of your mind. So conform means to act according or to be obedient to a role or a norm. It is set out, this is the way I'm supposed to act. Conform means to accommodate or comply, to make similar in form, nature, or character. I'm supposed to be just like this. No. So, but a lot of times, when you think of con, conform, See, and that word is two words, con and form. Same, con means same, form is shape. So it is saying we are not to have the same shape. Oh, listen to me now, because I'm trying to teach this thing. 
to have the same shape or form as the world. Uh, and in fact, when we think of the word con, uh, you know what a con is, a con artist. And they are out to swindle or to persuade by deception. And so Paul has said, don't be deceived are persuaded by this nonsense that you hear. But be transformed. Trans and form is two words. Trans means change your form. Woo! Got the mighty. Get this. Change your form. Change your way. Change your walk. Change your talk. You can't do it. But God can help you to do it. So we are to, it's kind of like, it's metamorphosis. You know how a butterfly, okay, okay. Don't let me get too excited. The caterpillar. Everybody, yeah, I said it. Everybody hates caterpillar. Oh, they so nasty and squirmy and yucky, chucky. But when the caterpillar goes, and you got to be careful because the caterpillar will lay the butterfly, I'm sorry, lay eggs, and they are careful where they lay their eggs. Listen to me now, this is important. Where they lay their eggs. Why? Because after a while, when the egg begins to develop, you know, we ought to be careful where we lay our eggs, then out comes their children. And they are careful where they lay their eggs. And we need to be careful where we allow our children to go as well. Well, you see, when the out comes a caterpillar, a caterpillar does not start as a butterfly. But after a while, he develops and goes into a cocoon. And with, within that cocoon, you can't see what's going on. But there is a change that is going on. He is changing. He is changing in form, in appearance, in structure, in character, in condition, in nature. And you cannot help him. He has to struggle to come out of that cocoon. I heard once uh, uh, in, in a school, they had a caterpillar, and he went into the cocoon and all that, and, and he was struggling to come out, and he was having a hard time. And so this one kid thought, well, now, you know, let me help him. So he cut open the cocoon, and yes, the butterfly came out. But it was not what it should be. It could hardly fly. It had a hump back. So I'm here to tell you, our struggles make us what we are. Do you hear what I just said? Our struggles, if we are to be different, be transformed from this world, there's a struggle that goes on with us so that we are converted or we go through metamorphosis. and we are a changed creature. So the purpose of our study is to demonstrate how Christians are called upon to be different from and to make a difference in. You need to hear me again. We are called upon to be different from and make a difference in society to discover that Christians do not fail when we are worse than others. 
This is what this lesson is about. To discover that we are not, we have not failed when we are worse than others. We fail when we are just like others. In fact, Paul says to the Philippians, let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you should ask yourself, well, what kind of man was in Christ Jesus? Humility. And that's the thing that we need to see. We proud like the world isn't anything. But when we show humility, when we put others first, when we love others, when we show forgiveness, now we have the mind of Christ. Now, I, I, I'm going to, you know, the Greek word for conform is something, something, something. I'm not even getting ready to deal with what it is. Because I'm not getting ready to get up and, and, and sisu, my, t, z, car, whatever. But we just going to go on. So we define courage. And this is what we did last week. And last week, you remember last week's lesson? We define courage as standing up for what is right. What is right and just, no matter what circumstances, no matter the consequences, stand up for what is right. We discover three types of courages. The courage of conflict, and that was battles, uh, challenges, and adversity. We talked about the courage of commonplace, doing right when not being recognized or appreciated for doing what's right. And then we had the courage of conscience to be guided by a strong sense of moral and ethical principles. Now, I will say again, that uh, we are using some of what Martin Luther King Jr. preached uh, November the 17th, 1957 at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. This was less than a year after, uh, after they refused, you know, less than a year after the oppressed masses in Montgomery had mobilized and defeated the indignity of riding on segregated buses. Now, let me say this. They defeated riding on segregated buses. Now, here's something I want you to put in your mind. Segregated buses were legal. It was legal to make a black person, a Negro, get up and let a white person have the seat. It was legal. But it was immoral and unethical. So, got to go. So in December 1955, Rosa Parks refused to conform to the policy and was arrested. And Rosa later said, I was tired of giving in. So what did she do? She exhibited moral courage and stood up for right despite the circumstances, in spite of the consequences. And doing that was bringing about a change in society by having a transformed man. So the change Rosa Parks and the Negro community in Montgomery instituted 
begin with their thinking. Because Martin Luther King argued only transform people can transform society. Now, let me give you a, a, a quote by Carter G. Woodson. I love this quote. Stop and think of what he's saying here. He says, if you can control a man's thinking, you don't have to worry about his actions. If you can determine what a man thinks, you don't have to worry about what he will do. Woo! If you make a man believe that he is inferior, you do not have to compel him to seek an inferior status. He will do so without being told. And if you can make a man believe he is justly an outcast, he deserves to be an outcast, you don't have to order him to the back door. He will go to the back door on his own. And my sisters and brothers, we have got to get rid of the stinky thinking that we do. We do not deserve to be the tail and not the head. God did not make us to be the behind and not the front. So the starting point in changing how others view you is first changing how you view yourself. And blacks in Montgomery did not conform to the second class status that white society had created for them. They did not accept it. Instead, they were transformed with a liberated view of themselves, the transformed view of themselves, and thereby they transformed the world. Now, Dr. King, in his message, used two metaphors that a person can use to interact with society. The, handle, the hammer and anvil metaphor. And he used the thermostat and the thermometer metaphor. So when metal is to be shaped and you put the material on, uh, it comes from a pliable liquid to you put, it's something hard and permanent, a hammer and an anvil is used. It's kind of like horseshoes. When you take the horseshoe, you put it on the anvil, and then you use the hammer to do the shaping. So the question comes, the, handvil, the anvil is on the receiving end of the hammer. The anvil is passive. It just takes the licks and accepts how the hammer shapes things. Well, let me just say this. Christians are not called to be passive anvils, but they are called to be love warriors, using the hammer of love and justice 
to create a new society. Now the philosopher Nietzsche once said that every man is a hammer or he's an anvil. That is to say, every man either molds society or is molded by society. And he goes on to say, who can doubt that most men today are anvils continually being molded by the pattern of the majority? Now, in 1962, Peter, Paul, and Mary put out a song that said, if I was a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, I'd hammer all over this land. I'd hammer out danger, I'd hammer out warning, I am out love between a brother and a sister all over this land. Then they went on to sing, if I had a bell, I'd ring it in the morning, I'd ring it in the evening, all over this land. I'd ring out danger, I'll ring out warning, I'll ring out love between brothers and sisters all over this land. And my sister and brothers, that's what we need today. We need to love between brothers and sisters all over this land. Then they went on to sing, if I had a song, I'd sing it in the morning. I'd sing it in the evening all over this land. And see, one thing we do, we love to sing the Star Spangled Banner. But that doesn't have anything to do with us. The Star Spangled Banner, then you look at us cross-eyed when we sing, lift every voice and sing. And in fact, I'm going to tell you, we're going to do, that's going to be our series in February. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Let me get back. If I had a song, I'd sing out a warning between the brother and the sisters all over this land. Then they go and say, well, I got a hammer and I got a bell. And I got a song to sing. I'm a hammer, the, it's the hammer of justice. It's the bell of freedom. It's a song about love between my brothers and sisters all over this land. And I don't know if we realize it or not, but America is in a crucial time when it's all right to hate. And that is what Trump is telling you. It's all right for you to hate me. But according to God, it is not all right. We are called on to love one another as he has loved us. Now you got all these folks talking about forgiving those who did, they march on Washington and tried to get rid of democracy. The bottom line is they were trying to put black people, Hispanic people, or Mexican and everybody who they felt was not white in a position of being beneath them. And God created all men equal. And when we look at our scriptures that we have in our lesson, we can see and discover in the Bible 
there were non-conformists. Paul was. Listen to Paul when he said, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, another one, Moses. Look at Exodus 2, 11 and verses 11 and 12. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were, and he watch them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Now, Moses could have stood by and said, oh, no, 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 I, I, you know, I can't get involved in that. But he didn't. Glancing this way and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Why? Because he could not become a part of a society that was killing his people. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were transform non-conformists because when the king said bow and if you don't bow I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace they said oh Nebuchadnezzar we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter if we are thrown into the blazing furnace okay so be it the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, ooh, this is the part I like. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Transform non-conformers. We're not going to conform to your way of living. And then here's Daniel. Now, O king, Daniel 6, 8 through 10, and he said, Now, O king, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published. He went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. So guess what? We see in the Bible that if we would be, if we are to make a difference in this world, then we cannot be like this world. We must be different. Now, I know your mama told you. She said, a man that don't stand for anything will fall for everything. And we have to stand Stand for what is right. Stand for what is Jesus requires us to stand for. And, and you know, the other part of the metaphor, um, the thermostat and the thermometer. 
the thermometer only tells you the degree, but the thermostat is the one that changes the temperature to make a change. So now, I'm going to ask you, what are you going to be? Are you going to be a thermostat? Or are you going to be a thermometer? Are you going to bring about change? Are you going to let things, the temperature stay what it is? We all have a need to stand up and be counted. Now, let me ask you a few questions. In what way will you seek to be a transformed? Now, remember, transform it means changed. You seek to be a transformed nonconformist. You're not going to conform to it in society in 2024. In what way will you seek to be a transformed nonconformist in society in 2024? Are you going to take a seat and sit down? Or are you going to get up and practice? Are you going to vote? Are you going to uh, perhaps uh, help somebody who is running to make a difference? Are you going to check to make sure? Are you going to hold the politicians accountable? What are you going to do? In what way will you seek to be a transformed nonconformist in society in 2024? What organizations are you participating in that is seeking to make a positive change in our world? Notice it said positive change. I mean, all changes are not good. Sometimes we just want to change for the sake of changing. But we are called on to be more Christ-like. Remember we just read it, Philippians 2 and 5. Let this man be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Christ never refused a person because they wasn't a Jew or because they didn't go to his uh, 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 sanctuary or they didn't go to the synagogue that he went to. He didn't refuse because they were of another race. My sisters and brothers, it is high time. No, it's past time for us to wake up. We cannot just talk about being a Christian. We must be about being a Christian. You see, Christians cannot afford to adjust to injustice. How do you adjust to injustice? Denomination. Any form of oppression that prevents the development and maximization of human potential. How can we settle for that? Let me ask you another question. In what areas in your life will you practice creative maladjustment? Rosa Parks said, I'm tired of giving in. What mistreatment and injustice 
have you become tired of giving in to? I, I'm not tired of talking about you jumping up and saying, I'm tired of paying income taxes. I'm not talking about that. See, before I um, came on the air, I was reading something sent, put, posted by R.J. Cleveland, a deacon here at our church. And he put on Facebook that in the East End, there are three grocery stores going up. In the West End, there are three liquor stores going up. And the question was, what in the world? This doesn't make sense. And I have to tell you, my sisters and brothers, it doesn't make sense. We cannot get good, clean, good groceries for uh, good food in the West End, but we don't lack liquor stores. Now, I see where they trying to put one and, and, the, and the neighborhood has been fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. And they act like they're gonna put it up anyway. And that's right there at the corner of uh, Algonquin and Cane Run. To your left, walk a block and there's a liquor store. To your right, walk three blocks and there's a liquor store. So why do we need a liquor store right there where, it, and it used to be the Bank of Louisville, but they closed the Bank of Louisville down. They closed the store down. There was a store right there. Uh, I, I can't even remember what the name of the store was. I went there all the time and I don't know what the store was. But you can't get, Kroger's moved from 7th Street, moved all the way out there. No stores, no food. We ought to be angry about it. Instead, of, they want to keep us drunk off of alcohol, off of drugs. So in whatever is in your life, are you tired of giving in? I know I am. I got news for you folks. I got more time behind me than I have in front of me. But before I leave this world, I would love to see our young people have a chance. And I'm not talking about Football, basketball. How will you practice the four historical values of black America culture? Resistance, persistence, brilliancy, and reliance. We need to understand that if we don't do it, and God said he will help us, but we can't do what he does and he's not going to do what we can do. And it's time for us They talking about now they want to break up JCPS. They more concerned about breaking up JCPS than about having good education. There's something wrong. Our children coming home at six o'clock in the evening. Our children.
and you sitting back thinking, well, I don't know what we can do about it. You can do something about it. Get up off your stool of do nothing and let's do something about it. Well, next week, our lesson will be, let me look it up. Uh, living the courageous life. Thank you, Sister Sharon. Living the courageous life. I done got so ticked off here until I couldn't even begin to tell you what it, what it was. Living the courageous life. Now, we will be celebrating Martin Luther King's day on uh, Monday. Please get out and become a part of something. But first it starts, remember I said, to make a change, we must first change our thinking. And so we're calling on you to change your thinking because become a part of a new society. God society, become a part of St. Stephen. You can do that. All you have to do is drop an email to us saying you want to become a part of St. Stephen. Address newstart at ssclive.org or call us. 502-583-6798 and tell someone that you would like to become a part of St. Stephen. Now, next week, our lesson will be the courageous heart. That's it. Thank you, Sharon. The courageous heart. And it tells how God equips us for all of life's challenges. Now see, God is not going to take away the challenges because God does not always remove the burden off our back. But God will, I'm here to tell you, he will strengthen our backs. I'll see you next week. Be blessed.